Well, hello and how are you doing? It's nearly Christmas, would you believe it or not? Anyway, I've been preparing Christmas presents for the whole family and now I've come to think about presents for the home brewer. What would I like to see in my Christmas stocking? So I have 10 items in here that any home brewer, whether they are a novice or if they've been making home brew for a few years, would love to receive on Christmas morning. Coming in at number one is a hydrometer. These gizmos are wonderful items for the home brewer. They are great at gauging the alcohol content and whether your home brew has finished fermenting and also how sweet it is. I really, really rate these and I would advise any home brewer to have one of these in their kit. You may think that the person you're buying a present for already has one of these. You've seen them use it and they probably do. However, they are really fragile and the amount of people out there who break them and then panic because they want to use one but their shop shuts or they can't get the shop to buy a new one. It's so handy to have a spare in the cupboard where you can just grab it and go. So any home brewer will be most grateful to receive a hydrometer in the Christmas stocking. And coming in at number two is, wait for it. Look at this. Now, this here is a wonderful item. It is a woody winter wine warmer. At least that's what I call them. Otherwise known as a demijohn cover. It's hand knitted and comes in a wide range of colors so you always know which demijohn cover applies to what wine. It's handmade by a winemaker and also a YouTuber. So I'm gonna give the link to the channel up by here. So go and check them out. They made a lot of wine and gardening videos. Brilliant to learn all about how to grow your own fruit and veg to turn into wine. I'll also give a link to the Woody Winter Wine Warmer down in the description below. It's the time of year where you want to keep your wines at a steady temperature. And one of these really does a great job at stopping the temperature fluctuations of your demijohn. And I'm sure every home brewer, winemaker, would love one, two, three of these in the Christmas stocking. So why don't you go and check out the videos and check out the link down below and buy your home brewer a funky winter wine warmer. Fantastic. Number three on the list is, wait for it now, some Bungus. Home brewers, winemakers always seem to be running out of bungus, whether that's the board type with no sense of humour or non-board types who have a party and know how to amuse themselves. For me, personally, bungus always seem to go missing. They end up in random cupboards, random drawers, they make great toys and fishing floats and things like that. So why not give the winemaker an ample supply of bungs for Christmas. And they do degrade over time as well. So it's always handy to replace your bungs every so often. So bungs is number three on the list. And now, number four, what's it gonna be? Oh, it's a book. This is my favorite go-to book, Booze for Free by Andy Hamilton. It has recipes and details of a whole host of wines, beers, teas, cordials, all made from things you can forage and things you can find in your garden or grow yourself. This is my first book of reference if I'm designing a new recipe because it's so full of information. It's great for new winemakers because it's so simple to read. It's full of tips, advice and all you need to know to get your first brew on the go. And for someone who's been making wine for a while, there's a lot more detailed and lesser known recipes in here. It's awesome. I love this book. That's my number four on the list is booze for free. And who doesn't like that? And number five out of the stocking is, and no, it's not a pregnancy test kit. It is a pH meter. Great for measuring the pH of wines. If you're a newcomer into the hobby of winemaking, pH has a great relevance to your wines. It allows you to mature them for longer, it develops the flavour and the aroma. So get used to using one of these because it will really enhance your wines. These are quite new on the market. People used to use litmus paper going back five, ten years ago. So if you are an experienced winemaker or your friend is, who you're buying gizmos for, get them one of these. It's an upgrade to litmus paper. 
It's accurate, it's fantastic, it's easy to use. I really rate these, and I use them in all of my wines. So that is a pH meter. Great Giesmo to have. As is number... One, two, three, four, five. As is number six, a reflectometer. These wonderful Giesmos do much the same as a hydrometer. They're only more accurate and have a wider function. You don't see these being used often enough in home brew. They use a lot in commercial breweries and wineries, and they are fantastic. This is what this can't do, a whole heap more. This is great, it's simple, it does the job, but this will take your winemaking one step further. It's fantastic. And it's always worth buying a decent quality one. A lot of the imports from China, Japan, aren't as accurate. So where you can, try to go for a decent one. They may cost a bit more, but they give you that degree of accuracy. So these two Gizmos, brilliant for measuring the alcohol content and more of wine. And number seven on the list, an airlock. Just as buns tend to go missing and lost, airlocks also tend to ward these. Or you try and sterilize them with boiling water and they just melt away and become a bubbly, plasticky mess. I've done that before. And you never seem to have enough airlocks to match your demijohns. They are only cheap, but they're really, really handy. I am giving links down below in the description to all of these items, and they were all made a home brewer, mega, 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 mega happy on Christmas morning. And number seven out of Santa Sap is a bottle brush. You may not think a bottle brush is too exciting, but when it's all wrapped up under the tree or in the stocking, it gives that sensory feeling of, whoa, what's this funny thing to play with? And bottle brushes do degrade over time. The bristles go soft, the wire inside goes all limp and flaccid, so it's well worth replacing every so often. So if you're a home brewer, you're buying for, who already has one, when was the last time they replaced it? They also made brilliant toys for babies. Number nine out of the stocking is, wait for it, Let's dig deep, dig deep. Varieties of yeast. Home brewers tend to stick with what they know and stick with the same yeast varieties that they always use for, for their wines and beers. So why not give them something to explore and play with? Buy them some different yeast varieties and they'll have great fun experimenting with the different flavors, the different styles of wine they can make with different yeasts. Wine making is a creative process a creative hobby. So the more raw ingredients you have to play with, the more creative they can become. Brilliant things to explore is yeast. And number 10, probably my favorite gift to give to a winemaker or beer maker, home brewer, is, let's put it out, this gizmo is a bottling wand. It's used to help you fill up your wine bottles or beer bottles with just the right amount of liquid. Really simple to use, it's spring loaded at the end, so when you remove the pressure, the liquid stops flowing. This not only puts the right amount of liquid into the bottle, but also saves wastage of the wine, and the wine going all over the floor, making a sticky mess. So the home brewer does not get shouted at by the other half. I really rate these, and I always have a few of these on standby because the spring-loaded tip does tend to break after a fair amount of use. So that is definitely on my list of things I buy for home brewers. So let me know down in the comments what you're going to be buying for your home brewing friend. And I will see you all really, really soon. Have fun now. Bye-bye. What number was that? Normally. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What am I missing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Da. This is a right memory game. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. I have eight. Two more things in here. Oh, I'm sure I've. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I am missing one. What was it? I knew there was something else.